You're listening to the Independent 89.9 HD4. We're live inside Studio 4, and we've got a special guest. It's Beaches-based singer-songwriter Landon Gay. He goes by Howdy. He's a true saltwater cowboy, and he's got a brand new single out called Hard Feelings. Good morning, friend. Good morning, Matt. Thanks for having me, man. We're going to talk shop on this new tune and, and more in a little bit, but right now, care to do a song for us? Love to. The song's called El Paso. Very nice. That, that was Howdy with El Paso. Hmm. So the new single, Hard Feelings, is the fourth single you've released under the Howdy moniker. True. First one, uh, Cowboy Dream, you released in 2020. You dropped two songs in 2021, including El Paso, which we just heard. And the strategy, if you look at Spotify numbers, seems solid. 38,000 monthly listeners for you right now, as of today. Uh, the song El Paso, which you just played, has over 650,000 plays on Spotify. So no. my <laughs> so my question, uh, is this the pace that you're writing or just the pace that you're producing or releasing these songs? What's what's the story yeah. on, on the uh, release strategy or lack of strategy? Totally. There? Great yeah. question. Lack of strategy is definitely <laughs> <laughs> the approach. But the tunes are all pretty old. They're mostly songs that are like more than two or three years old that I've mm -hmm. just kind of been either kind of like workshopping or figuring out like how they work in the recorded space. Because um, I, I went a long time without having music recorded and was just playing live and playing shows and playing the songs for people. And then got to the point of like in the past couple of years, finally recording the songs, figuring out how they want to be. Um, yeah, and just kind of taking it at my own financial pace yeah. as I can, you know, pay people to record for me and like help me out. Um, and just kind of at the at the pace that it feels right. I've never really wanted to do like the release a song every eight weeks kind of thing to stay like in the algorithm. It just kind of feels exhausting to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it, I'm just kind of more interested in like a long term music relationship where I can release things at my own pace and kind of not have to 
uh, appease the Spotify gods yeah. in the ways that it seems like we have to to like keep the numbers up. Yeah, I feel just really fortunate to like have Spotify shine a little light yeah. <laughs> on me and. Yeah, it feels lucky more than anything. Yeah, well, you might be subverting the algorithm at this point, I just you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, is there uh, is there a batch of songs that are recorded? You have plans to record uh, mm. the rest of of the tunes and and do a full length, or is that is that something you're you know just still kind of wrapping your head around right totally. now? Totally. There's definitely songs that that I've got and tunes that I'm kind of chewing on, tunes that I'm writing still, but there's definitely a next batch of songs that. I would love to have out by like next year um, mm. and have them more in like a, a bigger kind of large format yeah. way, like a longer project, five, six, seven songs. Um, but the three songs that I released most recently, El Paso, Stay in L.A., and then Hard Feelings, um, all kind of feel like they fit together and they kind of, even though they're singles, yeah. they kind of live together in their own way. But this next project, I, I do want to kind of have more of a, a formal yeah kind of yeah. release for them. could always package those in an ep and then you know totally yeah. and yeah. I, I thought about it and for me it's especially with the whole spotify game it's like just releasing song by song yeah can be so so helpful instead of throwing everything right out there in one big batch that some songs could get lost or right some things could just kind of slide under the rug yeah um which you see I, that too, like when people put out, you know, their ten song album, and it's like the first two songs have the most listens, and then it's just like tapers off. Totally, down. Just so unfortunate. Yeah. Or the radio singles that they had put out, you know, mm -hmm. before the full release. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I definitely wanted the first batch of tunes just to come out as singles and give myself kind of the best chance possible to yeah. let each song kind of get picked up or not picked up by Spotify or Apple Music or whatever. Right. Um. Yeah, that's kind of been the approach. It's just yeah. kind of throwing stuff at the wall yeah at your own pace yeah yeah <clears throat> and i want to ask you um about your writing style in a minute but first uh, a bit about your background yeah um you spent some time in nashville right and um I did. were you there to do music and then how did you know how did that trajectory bring you to jacksonville totally um moved to nashville once i graduated college i went to fsu in mm -hmm. tallahassee um and I'd been living in Nashville just over the summers and stuff, working for people, doing like kind of m more music industry, music mm -hmm. business kind of thing up there. Um, and just kind of quickly fell out of love with that industry approach yeah. and moved there and was just kind of playing for my friends, playing pedal steel and writing more, trying to meet people. And then probably a, a year into the process is when the pandemic got really bad and um Honestly, I just ran out of money <laughs> and like, <laughs> had to come home and surprisingly found like my experience back here in Jacksonville to be way more musically rich yeah. and just kind of able to lean into my community more and, you know, kind of offer something that I feel like isn't offered as much in Jacksonville, where in Nashville, I feel like I was kind of a dime a dozen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? There's that joke about like the gas station attendant in uh, mm. in uh, Nashville can play like ten instruments better than you can. <laughs> totally, dude. it's just everywhere, and I love that. Like, yeah. I love that music is celebrated there, yeah, and that people love music there, yeah. Um, but I'm sure it can feel a little bit like you know trial by fire and just a little overwhelming. Just to, totally, you know. And I think I was maybe there looking back on it, like so glad I went, so glad I met who I did, but it. I was just there too early. Yeah. I just, I don't think I was there in like my musical career yet. Yeah. To get the most out of that city the way that some people really can, like instrumentation wise, like yeah. singing ability wise, um, didn't even have songs released. Like yeah. there was kind of nothing for me to build on there. Um, so it's been cool to come back here. Jacksonville is a good place to start something. Yeah. Well, you we're, know? we're happy to have you here for sure. Thanks, um, man. Now let's talk a bit about Songcraft now, because uh, yeah. I find your songs to feel both, you know, familiar mm. and unique at the same time. There's elements of, of um, kind of country western style, maybe golf and western mm. <laughs> style, mm -hmm. but also uh, the production, I think, feels like intentionally lo-fi, like kind of some early like iron and wine stuff, um, mm. you know, like basement recordings or something. Totally. So who are some of your... Uh, influences like who do you come back to like when you're looking for that that well of inspiration and yeah and, uh, yeah the sounds that you like i mean honestly it's i wish there was more like contemporary artists that i could reference th mm -hmm. that maybe have that kind of that lo-fi sound because i agree with you like the yeah. sound of the records are kind of more their home style because mm -hmm. they were made just in our little 
Neptune Beach, terrible sounding apartments. <laughs> um, but I mean, my favorites are are the classics like uh, Roger Miller and Willie and mm -hmm. Glenn Campbell and Jim Croce, um, and Neil Young. Yeah, I mean, those dudes are totally my education in songwriting and instrumentation um, and just in like their boldness to make acoustic music that says something yeah. and is vulnerable. And um, yeah, I mean, th those records are just beautiful to me. <laughs> yeah, that's an, it's an infinitely deep well, too, yeah. you know, as far as inspiration. You know, if you're looking for melodies, if you're looking for uh, mm -hmm. s structures of songs or looking... Mm -hmm. um, you know, just obviously the lyrics, you know, totally. yeah, you can go back to those artists 100%. over and over again. Yeah. Those guys just feel like they have, they're rooted in the tradition that I'm trying to dig into, mm -hmm. um, and constantly trying to like be informed by. And in some ways I feel like it, I'm doing a new thing and my own thing. And in some yeah. ways I so want to be like honest to like the dudes that i'm so enamored by yeah. still yeah you know? well i think that's where your artistry shines through it's like mm -hmm. you know you take your influences and then you know whatever mm -hmm. you create is your own spin on it and you yeah. know your own artistic take so and then singing you know i wanted to ask you about this because yeah. when we we're chatting off mic your, your voice is, is really lovely and really great, but you said six or seven years ago you couldn't sing. <laughs> Tell me about that. 100%. And maybe I, I to some people I could sing, uh -huh. and that was like kind of my encouragement to like keep digging on it yeah. and to keep trying. Um, but it was a really frustrating thing for a long time, like being a musician that had a really... I was thinking about my voice more than anything else when I was playing, so... Um, it's really just been a process of kind of like diagnosing my own voice and seeing what my voice does well yeah. and leaning into who I am and not trying to sound like somebody else. Cause I, I think that was the most frustrating part of it all was trying to sound like someone amazing yeah. and constantly falling up short when I should have just been trying to sound like me. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's been like the most rewarding thing. It's like leaning into my voice and some like vocal training as well has yeah. really gone a long way um just learning more about the body and the anatomy and how the voice happens yeah um has been infinitely helpful yeah yeah and what to do with your face and your eyebrows and all <laughs> totally <laughs> like where yeah. all my attention was being held like how i'd learned to speak yeah or how i'd learned to use my voice over the course of my lifetime was not set up for like singing yeah um so kind of learning how to do that well, i love hearing about that and i think that's helpful for for listeners too you know yeah. like uh, aspiring artists out there that you know you, you can put the work in it's it's not mm. exactly like uh you can sing or you can't sing you know mm. you, you have a voice and you can use it you totally know? yeah so. i give a lot of vocal lessons i teach a lot of lessons for for kiddos and all around um and that's like my favorite thing yeah. is like showing people you totally can do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's a weird approach, but like yeah. you can. It's really rewarding to see yeah. other people grow in that too. Yeah. Or listen to this Bob Dylan record. You can do it. You can do it, man. <laughs> even if you can't sing. <laughs> well, uh, Howdy, thanks so much for hanging out with us this morning. The new song is Hard Feelings. It's available on all streaming platforms. You can hear it on the independent 89.9 HD4. It's in rotation via our local spotlight 20 minutes after the hour, every hour. Uh, can you do the new one for us? I would love to. This is Hard Feelings. Got a few good reasons to be mad And it's better that I let it all go Those sour feelings that I had I let them hit the road Now we just beat around the bushes We don't even have the music anymore Got a few good reasons to be mad And it's better that I let it all go 
when I'm cold Honey, I'm freezing Think I'll take it down south For the season So I'm not keeping hard feet I want to hold it all against you, but it feels so old. I want to hold it all against you, but it feels so old. There's just no limit on forgiveness. And I can't take the distance anymore. I want to hold it all against you, but it feels so old. When I'm cold, honey, I'm freezing. Think I'll take it down south for the season. So I'm not hard feelings Nobody wants to wind up in a one-man show Nobody wants to wind up in a one-man show Not the kind you tune into on the radio Oh, nobody wants to wind up I'm cold, honey, I'm freezing, think I'll take it down south for the season, so I'm not keeping hard feet.